Close your eyes for a second. Who's the you that just noticed the darkness? The you that's hearing this voice right now? Your brain is just electricity and chemistry, but somehow it feels like someone is home. That gap is what we call consciousness. And scientists have actually tried to put math on it, equations, algorithms, even scores. Today we're diving into those formulas, but also a wild new perspective that suggests consciousness might not be in your brain at all. Before minds, before math, there's life. And the question is, what does it mean to be alive? At the smallest scale, atoms don't just float around randomly, they seek stability. Nuclei form bonds, because stronger bonds survive. Molecules and compounds emerge because certain structures hold together better than others. And once matter gets complex enough, something strange happens. It begins to resist breaking apart. That resistance is life. A tree can't run, but it grows bark to protect itself. An animal moves to escape danger. Both are doing the same thing, preserving their structure against the chaos of the universe. Consciousness, then, may just be the next layer of that fight. Not only resisting, but noticing, predicting and reacting. In other words, matter became so complex that it stopped just existing and started caring about existing. If that's the foundation, how do we measure the caring? One idea is called Integrated Information Theory, or IIT. Imagine a camera with a million pixels. Each pixel records data, but none of them talk to each other. Now compare that to your brain. Billions of neurons not just firing, but firing in loops, sharing and integrating. IIT says consciousness is the difference between those two cases. The whole system generates more information than its parts alone. To test this, Researchers zap the brain with a magnetic pulse and record the ripple with EEG. Then, they compress the signal, like zipping a file on your computer. If the signal compresses easily, the brain is quiet, like deep sleep or coma. If the signal resists compression, it's rich and structured like when you're awake. It's not perfect, but it consistently tells us something about whether someone is in there. Another approach looks at complexity. Conscious brains produce patterns that are neither boringly regular nor pure random noise. Think of it like music. A flat tone is dull, static. Pure noise is meaningless. Consciousness sits in between, like a symphony structured, layered, hard to predict, but not chaotic. On brain scans, that sweet spot shows up clearly. It fades in deep sleep, drops under anesthesia, and spikes under psychedelics. And then there's Carl Friston's free energy principle. His claim, the brain is basically a prediction engine. It survives by minimizing surprise. When the world doesn't match your model, you either change your beliefs or act to change the world. This raises a question. If consciousness is integration, complexity and prediction, doesn't modern AI do that too? Not really. AI looks smart because it's trained to minimize loss, maximize reward, or predict the next word. It's statistical pattern matching, not awareness. A chess program can beat a grandmaster, but has no clue it's playing. Your chatbot can generate Shakespearean poetry, but doesn't know it has. In other words, intelligence and consciousness can come apart. AI shows us you can act brilliant and still be a complete zombie. Here's where things get interesting. Federico Fagin, the engineer who invented the first microprocessor, turned his attention to consciousness after a powerful personal experience. And he came up with a very different metaphor. He says, imagine your body is just a drone. Consciousness is the pilot. The drone sends back data and you see what it sees. But the actual experience, the color red, the feeling of warmth doesn't exist in the drone. 
It exists in the pilot. In this view, consciousness isn't produced inside neurons. It exists in a deeper field, something like the invisible Wi-Fi signal your devices use. Your body and brain are just the hardware plugged into that field. Fagin pushes it further. He believes what we call free will is tied to the very fabric of quantum physics the moment a probability collapses into a definite outcome. And that meaning itself isn't in the symbols we share, like words or bits, but in the conscious field that interprets them. Think of it like reading a book. The ink on paper isn't the story. The story only comes alive when it's experienced in your mind. So where does all this leave us? On one side, you've got the mainstream models. Consciousness tracks with complexity, integration and prediction. On the other, you've got radical takes like Fagin's, saying consciousness is fundamental, something fields of matter already carry. Either way, one thing is clear. Math is helping us trim the mystery. We can measure levels of awareness, compare states, even separate awake from unconscious. But the bigger question, what awareness is, is still open. If I had to boil it down, consciousness looks like matter organizing itself to resist entropy by predicting the world and itself in real time. Whether that process is fully inside your skull or plugged into something deeper, that's the frontier. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you want more deep dives like this.